Hello guys, I am here with a new topic about cement. In this video lecture, we will learn about the manufacturing of cement and what are the main constituents of Portland cement and what are the types that is type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 and type 5. What are the properties of these types and what are the uses of these types. We will discuss these main points one by one and the one you are seeing here what is this I will tell you in the upcoming slide so you are requested to please watch the complete video to get familiar with this topic about cement so let's start our today's topic first of all definition of cement cement is the binding agent of concrete something that serves to bind or unite that is cement is something that serves to bind or unite a building material made by grinding limestone and clay to a fine powder which can be mixed with water and poured to set as a solid mass are used as an ingredient in making mortar or concrete this is called as cement now Proceeding towards our main topic that is manufacturing of cement. Manufacturing of cement involves ordinary Portland cement or OPC uses some of the raw materials like uh, our uh, materials are calcareous, siliceous and argillaceous and all these materials are grinded and mixed in a kiln at about 1500 degrees centigrade and due to this temperature, due to this high temperature, their forms balls which are called as clinker that is due to fusion fusion into balls known as clinker and then cooling and grinding of clinker with addition of gypsum results in commercial portland cement now the raw materials could be lime silica aluminia and iron oxides interreaction in kill leads to more complex compounds when these raw materials are heated at about temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade these form new and more complex compounds major compounds are c3s that is calcium trisulfate calcium disulfate calcium trialuminate and calcium tetraaluminophorate and other minor compounds which are formed due to heating at about temperature of 15 degree, uh, 1500 degrees centigrade are magnesium magnesium oxide and manganese and potassium oxide and sodium oxide now this is the process of manufacturing now the, there are mainly two types of uh, manufacturing of cement that is dry uh, process and wet process mainly the process involve these steps which I am going to uh, show how these steps are followed first of all the limestone which is the main ingredient or main constitute or the raw material for the manufacturing of cement is queried that is limestone query with the help of excavator it is extruded and with the help of dumper it is carried to the limestone is traveled or conveyed through dumper and dumped into the uh, you can see pit where it is transferred through as you can see here it is the limestone and through conveyor belts it is transferred to the crusher to downsize it to convert it into smaller particles and then from here it is then conveyed to the secondary crusher where as you can see here the difference is in size the limestone queried from the query side was of this size and then crusher converted into it into this side and then from secondary crusher it uh, it uh, it assumes the shape of smaller particles are smaller stone and then from here it is conveyed to the proportioning equipment that is two main uh, constitutes that is clay and sand are proportioned sand and clay when proportioned then transfer to the grinding mill and grind it to a smaller sizes and then these are transferred to the preheated tower where these are heated and then it is transferred to the kiln where these particles are heated at about temperature of 15 degree 1500 degrees centigrade and clinkers that is small ball like particles are found which are called as clinker and then clinkers are sent to the cooler 
to cool them down then the next step is to add gypsum why gypsum is added we will discuss it in the upcoming slide then gypsum is added and then you can see here is the proportioning equipment and finish grinding mill this is the last grinding after the addition of the gypsum and then these are transferred to the cement storage from there they can be shipped to the market so this was the whole process of manufacturing mainly all of the uh, factories and uh, factories of the cement or cement industries follows these men processes the uh, next topic is main constituents in a typical portland cement first of all it is tri calcium silicate and its chemical formula is you can see here and shorthand notation is c3s that is tri calcium silicate and it is and the percentage by weight is 50 the uh, the next constituent is di calcium silicate its chemical formula is and by short notation it is represented by C2S that is 2 is for dye, C is for calcium, S is for silicate and its percentage by weight is 25. The third constituent is tricalcium aluminate. This is the chemical formula. 3 is for tri, C is for calcium, A is for aluminate and its weight percent percentage by weight is weight is 12 and the fourth one is tetra calcium aluminophorate the chemical formula is as you can see here c4 af this is the short hand notation 4 is for tetra c is for calcium a is for alumino and f is for ferrate and its percentage by weight is 8 percent then comes the gypsum the formula of gypsum is csh2 shorthand notation and its percentage is 3.5 and now here in this picture you can see is a pictorial representation of cross section of a cement grain that is if you see a cement grain under a microscope you will see this texture that every constituent have its separate position and separate role to play main constituents in a graphical representation you can see here tetra calcium is the most uh, abundant abundantly found element in the um, in the portland cement then comes the di calcium silicate which is 25 percent following by tri calcium aluminate then tetra calcium aluminophorate which is 8 percent and then gypsum is 3.5 percent and other materials like magnesium um, potassium and sodium oxide etc constitutes 1.5 percent now coming towards the types properties and uses of cement the four basic components namely as i discussed in the previous slide that c3a that is tetra calcium aluminate tetra calcium silicate di calcium silicate and tetra calcium aluminophorate are responsible for the different properties of the cement if the amounts of these compounds are changed the properties are also changed it means that all of the properties of the cement depends upon these four main constituents of the cement so let's see the first type is type 1 which is also called as OPC that is ordinary Portland cement its salient features are rate of strength development and heat evaluation are medium where it can be used it is used for general purposes in the construction of building in the construction of floors and roofs etc the second one is type 2 cement which is called as sulfate resisting cement and c3a and c3 that is tri calcium aluminate and tri calcium silicate contents are comparatively comparatively lower than opc as i mentioned in the previous slide that this the amount of that is the proportion of these four main constituents plays a vital role in the use or properties of the cement so it says that c3a and c3s contents are comparatively comparatively lower than ordinary portland cement and where it can be used aids in providing moderate resistance to sulfate attack and moderately low heat generation so as, as it is obvious from the name that is it is sulfate resisting cement and it is used at a place where it is the where the, the place is prone to sulfate attack 
the third type is rapid hardening cement in this rapid hardening cement the c3s constituent that is tri calcium silicate content are higher fineness are of higher fineness and its percentage is also higher where it can be used when foam work is to be removed early where we remove foam uh, foam work early it means that it, it will be at uh, at the site of uh, some water retaining structure or something like that the type 4 is low heat portland cement in low heat portland cement c3s and c3a contents are further lowered further lowered and it is used for large masses like in uh, dams and uh, bridges etc the fifth type is sulfate type 5 is sulfate and c3 content is reduced and it is for extensive as you can see here it is it is extensive for extensive exposure to sulfates and it says uh, it is a sulfate resisting cement now chemical composition of ordinary portland cement first of all the oxides of lime that is calcium oxide is 60 to 65% silica that is silica silicon silicon oxide or silica oxide is 20 to 25% uh, alumina is 4 to 8%, iron oxide is 2 to 4%, magnesia MgO is 0.1 to 3%, sulfur trioxide SO3 is 1 to 3%, and other alkalis like potassium oxide and sodium oxide is 0 0.5 to 1.3%. Now coming towards the average values of compound composition of Portland cement of different types. As I discussed, there are five different types of cement, namely ordinary Portland cement, modified cement, rapid hardening cement, low heat cement, and sulfate resistant cement. Now, compound composition, as I discussed in the previous time, in the previous slides, many times that main constitutes are these four constitutes, and the difference, the difference, um, changing the proportion of these constitutes, the properties of the cement changes. In ordinary Portland cement, the proportion of C3S is 50, C2S is 24, C3A is 11, C4AF is 8, and CO4SO4 is 2.9. Now go through this, uh, you can see, go through this chart, you will get to know how these proportions are varied from type to type and from constituent to constituent. So that's all for today. For more videos, you are requested to please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get video updates.